Good morning. Today's announcements are for week beginning the 15th of May and the service you will be watching is from Sunday the 8th of May and was led by Morris Farquhar. Monday 16th of May, committee will meet at 7.30pm in the lower hall. On Sunday the 5th of June, the PW are holding the Big Jubilee Lunch after our church service and this is to raise funds for PW. This will be held in the Mans Car Park and as well as lunch will include an exhibition of the seven decades of our Queen's reign. Ballyclare Victoria Flute Band will also play for an hour before lunch. If you would like to attend this event, please complete an invitation card. These are available in the church porch. If you are unable to do this and wish to attend, please contact your elder or a member of PW before the 29th of May. Next Sunday, the 22nd of May, the service will be led by the Reverend Gabriel Farquhar. These are all the announcements. Good morning. Welcome to our morning service on this Sunday, the 8th of May. You're especially welcome if you're a visitor to us today, and we welcome to our pulpit this morning, Mr. Morris Farquhar. But you're all very welcome. Lovely to see you all. There's good number in the church this morning. Now, our treasurer, Gillian McCallion, would like me to announce that £4,580 was raised for the moderator's appeal for Ukraine. Thank you all for your generosity. These are all the announcements. Good morning, everyone. And once again, you're all very welcome. It's good to be here, and I appreciate the opportunity to share. As an accredited preacher, um, I get around several different places, but it's always good to come to somewhere and to see a few new faces. So thank you for being here. We're here to worship God. I urge you to put aside your worries and your woes and your moans and your groans, and let's concentrate on what God has to say to each of us. We read in Ephesians 6, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, the authorities, the powers of this dark world, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayer and requests. And as the old hymn says, onward, Christian soldiers marching as to war with the cross of Jesus going on before. We're going to stand together, and that word stand is in our first uh, hymn, I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene. Let's stand and praise God.
Let's bring our prayers of adoration, of confession to God. Let's pray together. Loving Father, God of all mercy, we come to your throne of grace today with thankfulness, wonder, humility. Only you, Lord, can hear our prayers this day. No one else has the power to listen, to understand, to see the end from the beginning, and we praise your name for being here today. God of all knowledge, we don't really know a lot compared to what you have done for hundreds, thousands of years. And yet you've asked us to come to you when we need help with anything. And so this morning we ask as a basic necessity for your holy presence to be with us, beside us, in our hearts as we worship. Lord God, you sent Jesus to show the way, who is the way, the truth, and the life. We ask forgiveness for the wrongs that we've done even this past week. Please forgive us when our poor words have been a discouragement to others. Forgive us for a lack of words when encouragement was needed. Cleanse us from being good at ignoring other folks' pain that we don't understand. Lord Jesus, you knew the pain of setting your face toward Jerusalem and that ultimate awfulness of the cross. Help us to keep Calvary in our minds, to renew a desire to follow you wherever you want us to go. Thank you for your determination to follow your Father's will that we, by trusting in thee, might have that eternal life. Grant us strength to bring our frustrations, our tiredness, our worries to you and to pile them, as it were, at your feet, knowing that you are that friend who always understands. Lord, through your Holy Spirit, enable each one of us today to uh, keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. We ask these things in your wonderful name, and we pray together that prayer that you taught the disciples of old, saying together as one family, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, Deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The first of our two readings is going to be read just now from Ecclesiastes chapter 7, and that's verses 1 to 10. And I think that's David going to read. Thank you very much. <coughs> Uh, the reading can be found on page um, 672, um, if you wish to follow, and that's uh, Ecclesiastes 7. Wisdom. A good name is better than fine perfume, and the day of death better than the day of birth. It's better to go to a house of mourning than to go to a house of feasting, for death is the destiny of every man. The living should take this to heart. Sorrow is better than laughter, because a sad face is good for the heart. The heart is of the wise is in the house of the morning, but the heart of fools is in the house of pleasure. It is better to heed a wise man's rebuke than to listen to the song of fools. Like the crackling of thorns under the pot, so is the laughter of fools. This too is meaningless. Extortion turns a wise man into a fool, and a bribe corrupts the heart. The end of a matter is better than its beginning and patience is better than pride. Do not be quickly provoked in your spirit, for anger resides in the lap of fools. Do not say, where were the old days? Why were the old days better than these? For it is not wise to ask such questions. Amen, and may God bless to us his word. Thank you. 
Now we have some boys and girls here. I've spotted one or two already. I'm going to come down here, and if you wouldn't mind making your way to the front, I shall see you there. Thank you. Good. Hello. Are you well? That's good. You can speak and you can smile. That's a good start, isn't it? Anyone else going to join us, no? There's a known face down there. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> now, I've got a couple of questions for you. I'm going to leave this over here. Because I'm a bit older and then you forget and then you need some reminders. But Anyway, two words. Happy, first of all. Now, don't be afraid. Give me some answers. The older folks like to hear this. Oh, here's somebody else. Welcome as well. That's good. Good. Happy. What makes you happy? Do you think you could come up with something that you think? Yes. Say so it again. Video games. Video games. <laughs> Lovely. Well, make sure they're kind of interesting and you don't spend more than 20 hours out of 24 on them. What makes you happy? Christmas morning. Christmas morning. There's a good one. Yes, I like Christmas as well. Starting in about November sometime, I get worked up for Christmas, and it's a very exciting time. Not just what you get, but you can see the pleasure when you get. Right, let's keep moving along. <coughs> what makes you happy? My family. My family is not nice. Where's this boy's family? Who confesses, who confesses to looking at? Yes. To have a family, and I would add some friends as well, but family is, is very important. Right. The young ladies, what makes you happy? Tell me. Plenty of time, don't worry. It's hard to think of them. Anything that makes you happy? Just coming here and looking nice, I suppose, yeah? What makes me happy? Now, you could ask, sorry, you know another one, yeah? God. I hope that's not just because you think that's the answer that I'm looking for. <laughs> Sometimes, if you give that answer, you're not too far away. But yes, you're right. To know that God's there. We can't see him, but God is there and he's helping us. That, that, is, that is a very good point, and I'll maybe come back to that. Do you think you can keep your feet still? <laughs> no, I've got something in my pocket that sometimes makes me happy. Are you ready? What's in my pocket? Very good. Great communication. Going on, anyway, what do you think of God? Chocolate, that's a good guess. I have chocolate somewhere with me, but uh, I didn't have enough to share with you, so I didn't bring any chocolate. Your phone. phone. I've left that somewhere else. You can actually live without mobile phones for a short time. There's an off switch, and you can leave them alone for a while. It's very good for you. Anyway, my friend down here will like this one. What have I got here? <laughs> What's that, you know? A car. You're dead, right? Is it a modern car? Is it a kind of new one? How do you know that? Just, just it looks kind of old, like a wee box. Kind of car this is. Have a guess. Some of you people that remember the 60s and 70s, you'll know what kind of car that is. Mini. Yes, there is new minis around, or there are new minis. They're a wee bit like that, but there you go. I'll leave that. So, old cars, yes. I like to see... Yes, probably. I, I like to see old cars. In fact, I saw one on the road today. I was driving along and I flashed the lights and waved and I got a wave back. It's always nice to get a wave back. But different things make us happy. You're right. Uh, happy. You're right. Um, what are we going to almost the opposite? Sad. What makes you sad? Can we go to the other? If you had the smiley face the other way around, what do you think makes us sad? Any idea? Going to school, that's an answer. <laughs> Hands up who thinks that's correct. If you're going to school, that makes you sad, yep. Yep, the younger you are, the more likely you might say that. But you sort of have to do that for a while. But don't worry, it will come to an end. <laughs> There's different phases of that. Eventually it comes to an end when you get to about 25 or something. Yes? And what is that for? The, 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 the tests that you have to do? And the assessment, and some of you are maybe thinking about that, getting ready for it. It's a bit of a, bit of a chore, isn't it, to get ready for the next uh, stage. And sometimes when people are ill 
or maybe even they die. And we don't always talk about that, but I'm going to be talking a wee bit about being sad or mourning. And when somebody's ill, it's not very nice. It can make us sad. I'll tell you something else that made me sad the other day. I passed a building. Well, at least I passed where I thought the building was going to be. And this was an old school. And my dad had gone to this a long, long time ago. And I'm looking out for this building. And I go by, and it wasn't there. That may be a wee bit sad. Now, the building was falling down. You couldn't do much with it, really. It used to be a school. But it was just flattened. And all that's there now is soil. A bit boring, isn't it? But it's probably safer. So things can make us sad. But what I want to tell you is a verse in Matthew chapter 5, and we're going to look at some of this later. And Jesus says, Blessed or happy are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. That's the things that are good, the things that God uh, knows all about and that we have to learn. That's why we have the Bible. We're very privileged uh, to have the Bible, to learn about God. These people here know some things about that, I'm sure. So God expects us to look for the good things. Now, if you played your games all the time and never spoke to your family, that might not be the best. If you always spoke to your family and never found out about God, well, maybe they'll tell you about it and you can add that. And so we could go on. Finding out about God, that's what he says. Blessed are those, or happy are those, who really seek out and find what's important, what's good, the things that God knows are good. So try not to waste your time on too much trivial other things, really. Basically, Jesus is saying, yes, we can have sadness and we can have happiness, but it's more important to follow him. That's the simple message I wanted to get hold of. And part of the Christian message is thinking about heaven, and we're going to hear uh, a song or a hymn about heaven. Um, you probably stay here until after this is sung. I'm going to go back up there. And what's the title of this again? Hymn Hymn of Heaven. Now, the choir and all these wonderful musicians, thank you for your singing and your music, they're going to sing a verse and a chorus. In theory, some of you have heard this before, but it's a newish one, probably less than two years old, but it's very nice. So they're going to sing the verse and chorus, then after that we'll stand and sing it all together. So listen carefully. You're allowed to hum as long as you don't make any wrong notes. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. 
Let's have a prayer linked with the offering that we have given today. Father, we thank you for the joy of giving. We thank you for reminding us that there will be a day when there will be no more pain and no more sorrow. But we thank you in the meantime we can give toward your work and toward reaching out to others who don't know about your love. We thank you and we pray that you'll take this and help those who use this and to handle it, to be wise and to be sensible. In Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> now I'm going to have a, another reading. This is from Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. And we're going to read part of the passage about the Beatitudes and the advice that Jesus gave. This is on page 968 of these NIV Bibles. 968. Let's hear what Jesus says to us today. Now when he saw the crowds, he went up into a mountainside and he sat down. His disciples came to him and he began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you and persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me, says Jesus. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Amen. And we thank God for his word. Now, I want to say a big thank you to the musicians and singers today. It is a joy to come where we can hear some lovely music. And I know it takes work and preparation. But just remember when you get here, it's all, it's all worth it. So we're going to hear an anthem just now called Let Us Draw Near. Thank you. This morning we're going to look at one of the Beatitudes from Matthew 5 that we read together. This has to do with the 
sadness or the whole um, concept of mourning or feeling sad and dealing with loss. You might think it's not very cheery for a sunny day, but there we go. Life has the positives and the negatives, and this is one thing that Jesus talked about. He says here, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. The beatitudes, that word beatus, it comes from the Latin, I understand, meaning blessed. Sometimes uh, happy is used, but it's a little more or deeper than that. It's a state of, of well-being, of, of being content, which is what we were uh, alluding to earlier, uh, where being content and at peace with yourself and with God, that's really more important whether we're always having happy stuff or sad things. Blessed are those who mourn. And I want to first of all look at the meaning of mourning, the meaning of mourning. People get ill and people die. And certainly, especially in this last two and a half or three years, there has been a lot of uh, sadness, hasn't there? And people not able to properly express or come together. And this leads to all kinds of, of problems. Jesus recognized that mourning and grief and loss and all the rest is a part of life. And in our reading in Ecclesiastes, we read there that sorrow is, in fact, better than laughter. Better to go to someone who is experiencing sadness or loss than always having the, the parties, as it were. By sadness of countenance, the heart is made better. There's a whole sermon in there uh, of its own. Jesus had his friend Lazarus. He had died. He was upset. We get the shortest verse, or one of them in the Bible, there is another one that says, um, rejoice evermore, but this one, Jesus wept. He felt, and he does feel for our sorrows even today, his spirit, and if you look at what it means, his spirit groaned within him. He felt that. See, there has to be a place for the grieving process today, isn't there? And there is a hope, uh, as our hymns will tell us, there is a hope beyond the norm. That is why being uh, Christian folk, worshipping in church together, believing, and there will be those who may listen to recordings who may not get out, there's still a bit of fear and uncertainty. Um, wherever we are, we can worship God together. But there is a hope, that's why we believe. The people of the world, that I might call it that way, the non-Christian, the non-believer, will say, well, this is the end, this is awful, it's terrible. Well, of course there's awfulness, and, and sadness, but it is not the end. I'm here to remind you today that Jesus gives us hope and comfort. Blessed are those who mourn. Time will bring a realization of what we have. Um, and many of you, I'm sure, will have known the, the depths of, of loss. C.S. Lewis is a name that I'm sure you're familiar with. He died in 1963. Before that, he was a, an academic, a thinker, a writer. Uh, he met and married Helen Joy, and for a few years they had Joy. And then she took ill and died. And he had to grasp and grapple with what this meant uh, for him as, as a deep thinker. This is what he says about pain being like a megaphone. He says this, God whispers to us in our pleasures. He speaks in our conscience, but he shouts in our pain. He shouts in our pain. It's like his megaphone to rouse a deaf world. It's almost like a reminder. God says, excuse me, I'm still here. I'm here and I'm actually in charge of this. And it's not going to be awful all the time. Lewis also says, and this is a wartime kind of illustration, grief is like a, a bomber circling around and dropping its bombs every time it comes around. We think it's away and maybe it's not. Well, that's how it works. That is how grief can work. Blessed are those who mourn. And we have to be sensitive to each other. Uh, those who are younger, brothers, sisters, parents, etc. We have to be sensitive. And questions are also a part of the process of, of grieving. Why does this happen? We don't always get the answer to why. But we do know that God has a time and a purpose in things that happen, because he always knows the bigger picture. And heaven 
is always the richer for those who go there who have believed in him. The famous psalm that we all know, I'm sure, Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. There's different versions of that. Um, but in that verse, uh, different uh, interpretations or versions, but verse 4, we read there, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no ill. Let me just underline that word, walk. We cannot skip by it. We can't press the fast forward, as it were, and just hope it'll go away. We have to walk through experiences of loss and pain, especially when someone goes. One of the Scottish or the old Scots versions of that, uh, and I will try and see if I can get my tongue around this, uh, the same bit. It says, The mayor I walk through death's dark glen, yet I'll no fear ocht ill. <laughs> and I hope you get that. I'll give you that line again. Yet I will fear ocht ill. Now, basically, I'll, I'll no fear, so I'll no fear. So you won't fear or be afraid of ocht, which is anything, uh, ill or negative. We'll not be afraid of anything. What are you afraid of today? Why should we be afraid? We have God on our side, and we have an anchor, sure and steadfast. Too often, I think, generally speaking, the Christian church can be a little afraid, timid. What's going to happen next? Who's going to tell us what to do? God tells us what to do. He says, come to me, and I will give you rest, and I will give you comfort. We should not fear anything. And I know a little of what, what this may be, and, and I'm sure all of you do. You could all tell your stories, I'm sure. You might not want to, but I'm sure you could. I came home from school many moons ago in the early 70s. I was probably nearly 15 to learn that my dad had basically got up from a chair in an office and he had collapsed to the ground, and that was it. He was just 53. And there were lots of questions in adjusting to that. Why? He was doing God's work. God had decided, well, he had done his work and his time was up. But it was a massive adjustment for my brother, for me, and for my mother to soldier on, to find somewhere to live, and so on and so on. There was something written at that time which says this, and it was written about somebody else. His wasn't the tragedy of a premature death, but the triumph of a fulfilled ministry. He had worked away back in mission work in the 40s, 50s, 60s, his ministry was up. But that took a lot of adjusting and a lot of tears and a lot of uh, uh, process to go through. What about you today? Is there someone who has passed away and you haven't quite accepted that? You still want to rewind. Part of that reading also reminded us that, yes, we can ask, what about the good old days? Churches are famous for that, aren't they? Wasn't like this in my day, you know. And we need to ask the questions. Well, yes, of course, things change and there are differences. But we keep the principles. That's why we're here. That's why this church is still here. We keep the principles of worshipping God and loving him and following him and trying to reach out to others. Do we accept God's will or do we fight against it? You see, the more we fight and resent and mutter and moan, the more we do that, the more discontent we're going to be. My peace I give you. That's what Jesus says. My peace I, I give you. Now this isn't quite the Christmas season, but there is a couple of lines from a hymn. I'll not test the chief musician to see. I'm sure you'll know where this is from. But, but it says this. He feeleth for our sadness, and he shareth in our gladness. Isn't that the light? He feels uh, for our sadness, and he shares in our gladness. That was Cecil Francis Alexander. Blessed are those who mourn. But there's a second half to all this. And don't worry, I've only one more big point to make. I've left the other three at home. <laughs> so the second half is, right, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. They shall be comforted. Things can seem as if there's not going to be comfort. But Jesus says there will be. Comfort comes from two old root sort of words or parts of words, con and forte. Forte is strength, F-O-R-T-E. The fort, the castle across the way there. 
A fort is somewhere strong and fortified. Khan is with, with strength. That's really what that means. God is going to have strength. He's going to give us strength. And as we experience loss, we become vulnerable, and therefore we become weak. But God is our refuge and our strength. You see, if as believers we don't have that hope, we have nothing. That's what Psalm 46 reminds us. God is our refuge. And in Job's day, some of you know the story of Job. And he had vast wealth and family and all the rest. And bit by bit, God permitted uh, Satan to, to take it all away. He ended up ill with nothing. And he was just about dying. But his friends came to comfort him. Not sure they got very far, really. But Job kept his uh, faith. And he trusted in God. And at the end of it all, it was restored and brought back even more. Paul also knew about this in 2 Corinthians chapter 1. He says, God uh, comforts us so that we may be able to comfort others. There's the point. It's not just for our own good and we'll be okay, thanks. No, no. God comforts us in order that we may reach out to others. And then there's this process that comfort comes from God, first and foremost, the Creator. He knows. His Spirit will be alongside us to, to help us. Revelation 3 reminds us, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. This is often used as a gospel verse, and it's, it's correct in that way. I stand at the door, says, says Jesus, and I knock. And if you open your door of your heart and your life and let me in, then I will come in and uh, help you and so on. But also, if we're in a period of, of loss and grief, then Jesus is waiting to help us. But comfort also comes from other people, not just the creator, but the created. One of the youngsters mentioned about family. And yes, family is important, but Christian friends are also important. Because through family and friends, on the church family and whoever, uh, they can be of help. Now, unfortunately, some people are good at not being helpful. Let me say that again. Some people are not being good at helpful because they have a certain agenda. And I want to urge today, if you have friends who keep going on about something and never seem to listen to you, feel free to reduce your time with them with respect. But it's better to have friends who are on the same wavelength. Not everyone is the same, of course. But if you have friends who are on a similar wavelength, who will pray for you, who will encourage you, that is a huge thing to have. Whose rules do we live by? We, we should be living by God's rules. He says, I'm here to help you. Again, I'm going back to Paul, 2 Corinthians 7. Godly sorrow works towards repentance, and that works to salvation. And here he was uh, thankful. There was good attitudes. And he says there that we were comforted in your comfort. And the fact of reaching out to others reminds us that we rely on God completely to cheer and to help the Spirit, as it were. The best friends will be the ones who listen, who are interested, who will pray for us. Professor uh, Barclay was one of the great old Scottish theologians and, uh, theologians and, and writers of the day. He wrote endlessly on all kinds of things, but uh, he tells a story, and I'm going to share this story uh, very briefly about... Elgar, the musician, some beautiful music Edward Elgar wrote. But one time he heard this young girl singing somewhere. And you can imagine he's probably somewhere near the back of the hall and he's enjoying whatever. And this girl sings, and, and she really sang very nicely. Maybe as nice as some of you here. Who knows? But she used her gift in worshipping God. And Elgar listened, and he obviously was well tuned in to the music. And he made a comment after, and he said, uh, yep, she was technically very good. And she will be great when something happens to break her heart. She'll be great when something happens to break. That probably sounds a wee bit harsh, doesn't it? But he really was trying to say, when there's a wee bit of suffering, when there's a bit of experience in this person's life, then there'll be a wee bit of a deeper meaning to what she's doing. 
If you have gifts today, we need to use them. And you are using them, I'm sure, in different ways. Otherwise, what's the point of having the gift? And so we need to comfort from others, but we need comfort from God. And we need to remember to share that with others, to encourage them. We need to remember to invite our Lord to be with us in everything that we do. He shouldn't be away up there somewhere. And that will be directly related to your faith and your relationship, however simple or developed, however young or however old, a simple relationship with our Lord Jesus. That will keep us going. I wonder, is this your experience today, that you'll be comforted, that you have utter faith that you're not going to be uh, put off by anybody. You'll know fear acht ill because God is with you. And that means he's beside you. He's in your heart. He's guiding what you do and what you have to do. I heard the other day one of Catherine Jenkins' songs. That's another singer. I'm sure she's made plenty of fame and money by now, but she sings, and one of her songs back in 2007 is called, that somebody else wrote, um, How Do You Leave the One You Love? Maybe we need to turn that around. How do we cope with someone who we love that leaves us? But there's a line or two in that song that says, there must be another way, strength to make it through tomorrow. I'm here to remind you, of course there's another way. But can't just hope and muddle along and hope for the best. There is another way, and that's the way that God helps us to work out. If we but ask, we will have strength to make it through today. We are not guaranteed for tomorrow. You will hear in the next, perhaps weeks, months, of somebody who takes ill. And that's sad. I had a friend last year, uh, for many years, probably all my life, this lady knew me. She lived over in Scotland. I couldn't get to see her, but of course it's sad. She took ill, and she's gone. But she had a great faith, and she is looking forward. And she said more or less this to some of her family friends. She's looking forward to meeting around the feet of the Lord Jesus. I'll leave those thoughts with you, and we're going to bring some prayers for others at this point. Let's pray together. <clears throat> Father, we thank you that you are indeed the great comforter, the great redeemer, the great saviour. We thank you for that. We thank you that you can not only hear, but understand what we bring to you. And this morning, Lord, we bring so many requests in this awful and messed up world. We hardly know where to start. So let's start across the world and we think of Ukraine and Russia. Father, we pray for those who are fleeing for their lives, who are struggling to find a new home, the thousands and the millions displaced. We pray for those in Russia and especially a certain person there that you will somehow bring this evil and suffering to an end. And yet we thank you that even in the middle of this, there are Christian people, there is determination, there is a lot of good being done. We thank you for what has been raised uh, in this area and also the at least 630-something thousand that has been raised to help. We thank you for that through PCI. We ask that you will help those in charge of that. We think of other parts of the world where, again, the pandemic is striking, or refugees are fleeing, exploitation, parts of Africa, Afghanistan. Lord, the list is endless, but uh, again, we know if we look at your word that there will be the last days, and we're certainly in some of those to some degree. Thank you that you knew this would happen when things will get worse, and eventually they will get better. We pray for our missionaries today, and we thank you for many of them working away in difficult places. We pray for protection and safety. We think of Naomi Lerimore in Kenya, working with Christian education, where they will have elections. And again, we pray for protection for people uh, like that. 
you think of the wider world of uh, the PCI, the army chaplains, the prison chaplains, the social witness, all these things that go on and we don't always know very much about it unless we take the effort to find out. But we thank you for the publications that will keep us informed. And we pray for those who are doing these very, very uh, important tasks. And we pray today locally, anyone in this particular area, in this congregation, who are lonely, those who are listening to this who cannot come out for different reasons. We pray for those who may be ill, who may be caring for others. We pray for the youth, the exams, the transition from one school to the next, the anxieties of which school they might get to, the further education decisions. There are so much in our family circles. <clears throat> and so we take a moment in silence to pray for what is on our hearts at this moment. And lastly, we pray, Lord, for this congregation. We pray that step by step you will lead to call the person to pastor this flock. And we thank you for what is happening already in this period. We thank you for your ways, that they are always better than our ways. And they're always for our good. We ask these things for your glory alone, in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> Now, I must at this point thank the convener for this opportunity. I must remember to do that. I do know your convener very well. It's a joy to be here. And I'll tell her how good a welcome that I got today. I can tell you as a simple fact, whether I'm biased or not is entirely by the way, but Gabriel is one of the most experienced wisest and kindest person that I've known. So you'll be in good hands and I know that she's being well looked after. Now we have another hymn don't we? Guide me, oh is it Redeemer or what is the word? Redeemer it says. Guide me, oh my great Redeemer. Let's stand. Now, you, you were singing fairly well there but I suspect you could do better. These folk are working very hard here and uh, so let's stand and sing our last hymn together. Thank you. <clears throat>
And a blessing as we go. God, go with you on your way. God, protect you from the fray. God, keep your body and your soul and watch over you as the years roll. God, keep you safe when the cliffs are sheer. God, keep you safe when the night is drear and keep you safe on the path you tread. God, keep you and be with you at your head this day and always. Amen.